Thank you. Can you hear me well? Yes. 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 Okay. Good. So, um, thank you very much for uh, inviting me to do this talk uh, today. Um, this talk is um, an elaboration of some ideas that I have been developing the past few years, and um, it it is to do with the need for us to define what constitutes computer music um, in terms of a discipline, in terms of teaching, in terms of uh, learning, and uh, and what we, sh we should expect of anyone, in, well, or what anyone coming into computer music should expect that they will, he or she will have to learn or have to go through. So, um, so let's go with that then. Um, this, a long time ago, when I was about 15 years old, I took a summer course uh, in composition. And that was a very interesting one, very interesting course. And I was really interested in starting to do my pieces and so on. And uh, so I met the teacher who was a very well-respected composer. And then the first thing he asked me is whether I wanted to be a composer. And so I said, yes. And then what he did was he sent me down to one of his assistants and I spent the whole course doing species counterpoint. Never saw him. So the question is, so do you really want to be a computer music composer? Do you have what, what it takes? So what is this talk about? <clears throat> this talk is concerned with trying to define what the discipline of computer music is. And in defining it, we're trying to define what, the, what makes up the craft of computer music. In the same way that you, you, you can see that the craft of composition, of instrumental composition, comes, uh, passes through the learning of, of uh, folks and species counterpoints and all that, we, um, we, should have, we should be able to define at this point what, what makes up the craft of computer music. So traditionally composers expect that what they will learn at the conservatory will be sufficient for dealing with all the issues in computer music. And it's, um, it won't take long for them to find out that uh, it really, it's not what, um, what they think to start with. In that case then, they go and look for a computer for a studio assistant. So, well, who wants the studio assistant? I know I, this slide is mostly uh, dedicated to other countries where they don't know what the studio assistant is. But in in France, you won't know it very well um, the, the position of the studio assistant. In many places, commissioned composers who cannot cope with the strain of figuring out what the uh, what the computer is supposed to do, um, and these these people are assigned the obligatory studio assistant. In fact, I think these days they it's by default you get you given a studio assistant. Um, the um, the studio assistant is generally an individual who is well versed in many aspects of technology, and someone who has a wide knowledge of techniques and methods, and especially has a great uh, ear for detail, get eye for detail, knows about absolutely everything about the the workings of the uh, of the technology and the computers and music and so on. So the composer, on the other hand, is crippled by his last lack of skills, and he gives control to, to the skilled uh, assistant. In this case, then, we often wonder who is the author of the piece. So now we look into this basically brings the need for developing uh, the Gradus Aparnassum for computer music, which um, starts from the premise that conservatory education does not prepare you for computer music. It's clearly a very important component, but it's lacking in content. And also, we, we, we know that the technical skills that are needed uh, cannot be conceived considered something devoid of artistic merit, as if somehow by learning 
these techniques or these methods or these things, composers are tainted. It's definitely not engineering. This is, a, I, I, thought, I think it's important to make this point because in many days, um, there is a sense by many composers that the just by merely uh, learning the the technology or, or or spending time with that they are somehow lowering themselves into the uh, into a kind of a, a lower form of life who knows about technique technical things and they shouldn't be doing that they should be thinking of higher things so this is not um, in a in a modern computer music environment, this is not uh, true. So now let's go and try and define what a gradus parnassus for computer music should be. Well, we'll try to achieve this in this talk, but as you will see, this is a very preliminary discussion. And what I want to do with it is basically I want to provoke some thought and propose some ideas and then let the, the uh, let these ideas be left out there for people to think and to contribute to and to develop further. Okay, so let's try to define the area of computer music. So I'm gonna look at two um, at two attempts. Um, I selected two. I mean, there are more than two attempts, of course trying to, to define the air, but I've selected two uh, because of their significance and also because of the GIF complementarity and different ways of going about things and going about um, defining the, the, the ideas that are involved in computer music. So the first one is one that is um, already maybe mm, 20, 25 years old. It's, um, it's what... Uh, Richard Moore defined what Richard Moore um, developed in his book Elements of Computer Music. In the um, first chapter of his uh, Elements of Computer Music, he goes uh, to a certain length to try to define what computer music should be and what the ideas are involved in computer music. And um, I think it, it is maybe one of the first um, full attempts to, to do that, that type of thing. And it's um, because of this, I think it's important to, to single out and, and bring it here to discuss. Um, and also because of being 25 years old, I mean, there are things there that maybe um, are 25 years old. But nevertheless, many of the ideas are there are still fresh and very important for us. The next work uh, which I want to single out and discuss, is one that has been developed as part of a, a cost uh, action in Europe. Uh, this sound to sense or sense to, sense to sound um, uh, cost action, and then and the the development further development developing from there, you had the the SMC network, the Sound and Music Computing Network uh, that grew out of that. And in there you have a lot of um, ideas and documentation and discussing the, um, the things that make up Sound and Music Computing, uh, which intersect very much with, with the uh, computer music. And of course, a lot of what they talk there go go beyond the um, the mere definition of the air from the music perspective, from the composer's perspective. But it also is important because it also defines a sound and music computer and computer music as a research discipline. And what are the you know what are the uh, directions that it, it, it should take or directions that it, it will naturally take. <clears throat> Okay, so let's have a look at these guys, these these two examples uh, in detail now. So, talking about the disciplinary context of um, computer music, we have uh, Richard Moore um, uh, says um, that most 
academic disciplines are disciplines of thought. They exist to define a correct, or at least a useful, view of some subset of human knowledge. Computer music, however, is strongly interdisciplinary. Therefore, a correct view is one that, just, uh, that does justice to several points of view simultaneously. And, um, and I can go on. An awareness of these points of view is important, not so much because the ignorance of any one of them makes it po impossible to do anything, but because what may be done it will eventually be limited of that lack by the lack of awareness. A great deal has been discovered in different places, and in using the computer to make music, artists are obliged to master as much of this medium of expression as possible. So that's what I've been talking about before. This idea that you, can, you by engaging with the technology, you are somehow tainting yourself is very old-fashioned. Um, and um, in order to advance, to be truly advance your work within computer music, then you really uh, you, you you need to engage with it with the technology as much as possible. So he proposes um, an interdisciplinary map that will um, try to kind of uh, trace out the important areas of computer music. Now this is um, uh, this is a, a photo from the from his book. So this picture comes straight from the book. Um, and um, as you can see here, there are five, he defines five areas, five disciplinary areas that are um, so the corner, cornerstones to computer music. So at the top we have music, um, then to the left, uh, depending on how you see it, to the left or to the right, you, you have computer science. And to the other side, you have psychology. And as the basis at the bottom, forming the basis of the air, you have engineering and physics. Now, as you can see, these areas um, intersect and um, there are a number of, of sub-areas that are intersections of these, of these areas. So you, you have the intersection of psychology and, and physics in psychoacoustics. We have um, the intersection of engineering, computer science, digital hardware as digital signal processing, device design, engineering and physics, acoustics, and computer science um, and engineering and leading on to the side you have uh, programming. Um, and at the top you have theory, composition, performance. And then psycho psychomusicology on the side, on the side of psychology, and at the center you have computer music. So as you can see, the idea of 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 a correct view that does justice to several points of view is one that uh, on which many uh, many skills and many uh, um, elements are connected together. So. Uh, um, a, comp a, comp a composer and a mus computer musician will require to travel, to be able to travel through this, through this map uh, with fairly comfortably in order to be able to, to, to master the, and, and, and to, be, to be able to master the, the discipline. So this is one of the elements that we might consider when building up a gradus ad pernasum of computer music. So now we consider the SMC roadmap. <clears throat> so the SMC roadmap attempts to determine what the current challenges are to the discipline and what the future scenarios wants uh, once some of the roadblocks have been clear, cleared. So they basically try to, to figure out what is that we need to, to have to, in order to advance the discipline and then what we'll be able to do in the future. So this is 
there's a visionary area uh, side to it and um, so it goes beyond to trying to just define the discipline but trying to define the discipline and the challenges that we have so you you have an agenda that is mostly research oriented um, so there are two of the strategies and challenges in the SMC roadmap that are relevant to discussion here and important to, to it's important that we bring them out so the, the first one is the idea that we have to intensif intensify interaction between research and the arts so the the development of computer music and its future um, depends very much into the, in uh, to, uh, uh, by to depends in on this to develop to go forward, forth as we see that um, a lot of what we're doing is new and needs to be redefined and needs to be found again and and the research and research is very important and and it makes the kind of creates a backbone for the development of the area so in fact when we talk about research and the arts we we see the very important role of research in composition so um there has there's a there's a um there's a big debate now that has been uh, going on in the uh, academic circles in the UK and Ireland which is research in composition and um, some composers mostly the traditional composers most people very much linked to the tradition don't see that um, there's there's the need for any research in composition whereas uh, we make the point that research is intrinsic to the work of a composer and in computer music especially it is, this is especially true. Um, the second point I wanted to make is that I don't have there is the the need to design appropriate multidisciplinary curricula for sound and music computing. This is um, significant because that's basically what we're trying to do. One of the things we're trying to achieve here is try to to find what we need in order to develop the. Uh, the new practitioners and the new researchers in this case. So here we see uh, some requirements. So from from these ideas um, and from our understanding of the field, there are some clear fundamental requirements for a computer music practitioner. And that's where we're going to try to um, start a discussion from. Uh, we call it four pillars, four pillars of, of computer music. So the first one, uh, which is music theory, composition, performance. And here we have, um, okay, part of it is, is, is uh, traditional conservatory education, part is not, because when we talk about music theory, we're talking, we also talk about the the, the, the high end of, of music theory where, for instance, I'll give you an example of where you can use, um, where, where mathematics is used for, uh, for the study of music, where perception is used, uh, psychoacoustics and so on. So we talk about, uh, you know, mathematical music theory is an example of this, but, you know, something that goes beyond the tradition, the very old and dusty Harmony manuals and so on. Um, next one is, um, of course, it's the the whole area of audio of sound. So it comes from physics and acoustics and psychoacoustics and so on, and then also bringing uh, what the technological supports for this are and the know-how of the audio technology. I think this is key because it's very important for you to understand what kind of supports exist and the state of the art in these. But also, uh, the you know, um, this is how 
understood from the basis of, of uh, a sound basis of physics and, and psychology and psychoacoustics. Then one of the obvious pillars as well is computer technology and computer programming. Um, so that's central and that's that makes these are the tools, these are the instruments that we we are using that we, we need to master in order to, to develop. And then um, as a clear defined pillar fundamental mathematics. I, f I think this is this is key because it sort of links everything that you see. Um, it's a kind of a it's a language that's really important to learn and it's very important to learn to use and to apply in, in the other in the other areas. So I think these are or say that's called our four pillars. And we'll use our four pillars now to try and and work Work out a, a curriculum for computer music. So this is what we'll, we'll do next. Okay. So, so in order to provide the context, so I not only trying to say say a few things, but are, um, in kind of are general and they're observational and uh, maybe philosophical and so on. But I want to try to outline now uh, what would be, you know. A computer music program based on these ideas, based on the four pillars, and based on the principles we discussed before. And this um, would deliver the required lemmas that will form a computer music partition. Note that I'm actually shifting from talking about composers and moving on to computer music practitioners. Again, I'm mindful that the word composer is a very loaded word as well. So, um, such a program can be designed to use a music programming language as a main educational and creative tool in computer environment. And that will be the centerpiece that will join all the core settings. Now, when we talk about choosing such a language, we need to see what will be, um, what will be something that will be most general purpose that will allow you to to learn how the how the environments and learn how the concepts they are and the, you know and a language that's aimed at the middle level that's no not very large so that's uh, so not a huge language so you that you can grasp the principles fairly easy but that has a smooth learning curve. That's not too easy to start with and then becomes very complicated afterwards. Or that's not too difficult to start with and then and then they making it difficult for the uh, for the hooks in the course to be developed. Uh, there are many options for this and you can take your pick. So I'm not I'm not going to elaborate much more on this. So there are a few basic sessions of, of such a program. So we have five sections. The first would be an introduction to computer music, followed by a course on music programming, a course on interaction, a course on sound synthesis and processing, and uh, course position studies. Now, these are while I'm showing this as separate things, there is a continuum that joins all these things, and you can't think of any of these things in isolation because they, in isolation, they they, they become meaningless. Both that um, that has quite a meaning, and and, and that has. Um, that by joining, by by connecting with the other, makes a whole that is the whole of computer music, a whole that uh, connects everything. <clears throat> okay, so um, let's talk about each one of these individually. What would would we study? In, what would be the, the elements of introduction to computer music? So we'll talk about um, an introduction 
connection to the area and the background. And this would include historical notes. Um, I'm surprised at how little people know about the development of computer music and development of, of the, the discipline of computer music from the 1950s onwards. Um, last, um, when I was at in um, early this year, I went to a conference where uh, a, there was a keynote speaker coming to talk about the first programming language, the first music programming language, or the first music programming system. And uh, um, he came about, uh, he came in and said, oh, this is the first programming system, music programming system, and, it, uh, and he, he said, and, and this is Music 5. And I started trying, to, I, at that moment, from that moment onwards, I wanted to crawl under my desk because it was so cringing. Um, first of all, Music 5 is not the first uh, music programming language. Um, and uh, all the stuff that he was saying, it was very, it was very, um, there's a lot of inaccuracy, inaccuracies and a lot of um, um, junk really. That's, so, you know, it's, I'm surprised at how many people uh, talk about the um, um, things uh, like historical aspects that, that, and they don't know anything about that. Um, and there's, you know, there's plenty of documentation, there's plenty of material that can be used and so on. So, um, this will also, uh, coming from historical notes, it will go into music systems in general and how they evolved and how the, you know, teasing out some uh, very important elements uh, in, in, in music programs, such as in music systems, such as aspects such as, um, you know, sampling of signals, for instance, um, and uh, concepts such as uh, the Nyquist uh, frequency, the, uh, the Nyquist theorem, and so on, that kind of, that kind of thing. Uh, that, that's, that's also linked to the development of, uh, of the area. And these are coming into technical foundations as well for the area. Um, so all this basically will complement the... Um, the discussion and give it kind of a, a very um, kind of wholesome introduction to to the area. So we're ready then to jump into the music programming side of things. And um, here we we can focus on a particular system. So we can choose a language, a system, and then go on and develop um, these concepts with a reference of, to a particular system. So we talk about fundamental concepts, um, and uh, fundamental concepts can be, um, you know, different paradigms of, of programming and so on. The idea of signals and graphs and signal and, and how they they are structured in a uh, in a you know music programming language, um, aspects of control of flow, uh, composing elements in a language, extending the language, and so on. So the, all these things are very, uh, very important. And then they can, they can be, uh, all these concepts can be taught with reference to, to a language, but then because they're general enough, um, this can be translated to lots of other environments where people might decide that they will want, want to work in a different programming environment, but the concepts are there and they can be translated. So uh, finally, then we have move on to uh, the element, the aspect of interaction, and so in, in different ways that you can interact with a computer music system. Um, so we will, the technologies that are there, the ideas of interaction, um, the idea of, of using computer scores and scripting. So um, different ways of um, of uh, notating and. Uh, and translating things to computer uh, and so on, and being able to script these things in, in a kind of with uh, different uh, scripting systems and languages and so on. Um, other basic aspects of MIDI, which are which is still there and very important. Um, so networking principles, and then we. Uh, Protocols such as OSC and so on, um, 
Um, and very, um, very, uh, very important as well, the idea of, of hardware hacking. And so much, there's a lot, lot happening now where you, you know, you, you be able to build controllers yourself, build elements. And um, so an introduction to hands-on um, uh, building of, of devices and, and so on. And in sound synthesis and processing, uh, we have um, very generally, generally kind of applied, but you can use um, also the chosen system. So if you had a building on what you have there in you know, a system and you build on the interactive as aspects that you studied, and then you can start applying and looking at classic techniques of sound synthesis, such as subtractive, additive distortion synthesis, and so on. Um, tie domain signal processing, delays, filters, um, spatial audio, and so on. Spectral processing, your transforms, convolution, phase recorder, spectral models, and so on. And granular techniques and physical models. So this kind of a, uh, forms a complete um, set of things that you can be studied under under the the heading of sound synthesis and processing, and and finally we go on to look into the idea of, of composition studies, and um, various ways in which computer music can be composed. Um, so the classic uh, aspect of classic techniques and methods of fixed media composition. The idea of fixed media plus live performances that um, have been uh, has been used um, widely, um, and how how to do live processing and how can the live processing can be applied and so on. Um, Study so elements of improvisation and. And then that, within that, you also have the, the practice of life coding and so on, which you got there. Um, the idea of computer music as el an element in installations, as a kind of a, a, kind of a uh, straight element, in the, kind of a, as a building element in installations. And something that is growing um, uh, now is the idea of, of um, well, network music but also web-based web music uh, where we're using the infrastructure of the World Wide Web for music making. So in conclusion then, we, we really need to understand that computer music in the 21st century is a world away from the big composer notion that lingered from the 1800s to into later in the 20th century. We have um, this idea was encouraged by the traditional conservative education and is completely bankrupt and useless for the majority of aspiring musicians today. Because it really does not account for the fluid nature of music making that is taking place around us. It does not foster the learning of the skills that are key to, to an embracing of technology. So, I wanted to basically try to show a few points where I think we should be heading and the basic skills that we're lacking. And in doing that, I tried to provide an example of what I think, I'm thinking, kind of showing a sample content for a computer music program that would be built on the idea of four pillars, which is essential knowledge required to move ahead in the area. And so we're not really at the point where we can define what is our graduates of Parnassum. But there's currently something out there that's emerging as the foundations of, of our discipline. And um, the idea that I brought in this talk are but um, the, the, the kickstart of this discussion. Thank you. So, um, 
we have time for questions. Okay. And but if you have a question, I invite you to come here because uh, otherwise I'm afraid uh, first uh, Victor won't see you unless you are in the middle of the room. And the most important part, he probably won't hear you. Any questions? Don't be afraid. <laughs> It's just a few steps. You just have to walk. kneel before the neck. <laughs> <man. laughs> no. No questions. It looks like you have been crystal clear. Okay, great. There is no question. <laughs> I'm going to send it in the email. Oh, okay, so, but you will receive emails. So. That's 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 great. Yeah, yeah. I love to hear the opinions on, of everyone on these ideas. Yeah. Thanks a lot for your presentation and for being thank with you. us. And uh, let's. Thank you. Thank you.